right now that we've painted that in, I'm going to focus on the bony areas of the creature next. So I already have a smart material made for these. I have this bone one. I'll really quickly explain how it works. The brush strength is very, very strong. But the way it works is that it's composed of three layers. We have our first base bone layer. It's just a simple color with a depth, with sort of a scratchy depth mask applied to it. Then after that we have this other layer that's a bit darker and it's more or less applied everywhere thanks to the edge scattering. It uses this texture maps to mask it out so it looks more like some streaky dark patches that are placed just about everywhere on the model. And then we have a very light layer that is only applied in convex areas so that the ridges of the bones have an especially light highlight on them. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then if I bring down the results here. See that I might make the texture map itself a little bit smaller. There we go, that's looking pretty good. It'll require some hand painting beyond just the smart material, but it's a good base to get us started. However, I don't just want to hit fill because that'll fill in everything. I only want it to be on these large side plates, most of the skull, these guys right here, and the tail, or the very tip of the tail. So the first thing I'll do is I'll make a new layer. I'll call this one Bone. And then I need to freeze most of the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to freeze the areas that would have the bone texture on them, and then I'll invert that selection. So I'll go to my Freeze tool, and the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be in the shell UV set because that involves all of these main outer bones and I'll freeze the entirety of that. Now it's not quite perfect. There are some areas here that have been frozen that I don't want to be frozen but we'll get to that in a second. Then I'll go to the body and I'm going to freeze this tail section right here. So that would involve this guy. One half of it and then I need to get the other half. There we go. And then the rest of it I'm pretty much just going to have to do by hand. So I'll switch over to one of the brush modes and I'll just start painting more of it out. There we go, that's a bit better. If I hold down control, I can unfreeze something. There we go. So I went up to freeze and I toggle freeze view. That'll just change what the frozen areas look like. So with that default checker pattern, it was very easy to tell what was frozen and what wasn't, but it was very difficult to see what was going on because it was so dark. So what I've done is I've changed it so that the frozen areas now appear much lighter than the rest of the model. That should make things a lot easier for me to see.
All right, great. We have all that frozen. So now that's frozen, we need to invert the frozen selection so that everything but the bone plates is frozen. So if I hit Control Shift I, or if I go to Freeze, Invert Freeze, and you'll see now the bone plates are not selected. So before we actually apply the smart material, the very first thing I need to do is I need to go into the base skin layer and I need to remove the depth map from these areas. The reason is because otherwise the depth map from our bone material will be overlaid on top of the depth from our skin material. So to make sure that the normal map doesn't get too confusing with all those overlapping details, I'm going to erase the depth channel from the base skin layer on these bony plates. And so what I can do that is I can go with my erase tool and in my texture editor I can simply drag a box using the box stroke mode over the entire UV set. However before I do that I need to make sure that I turn off depth and gloss painting. This way the erase tool will only affect the normal map. So I'll zoom in real close to the head here. Hopefully you'll be able to see what happens. So I'll erase this. And you'll see it becomes much smoother. It is now ready to be replaced with the depth map from the bone material. So you need to do that really quickly to the shell as well. There we go. And now what we can do is with the bone material active, I'll turn on gloss and color painting again. So with that, I can then fill the entire bone layer and have that only apply to those areas. I'll save it and then I'll hit Control D to deselect. Okay. So now we have our bone and skin textures.